Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, we always want more of God. We sing that we want more of you. We want more of you. Lord, we invite you to come in and take your place in our hearts, Lord. All we need is more of you. More of you, God. We welcome you, Father. Hallelujah. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Very good afternoon to you, my brothers and sisters. I know that you have been so faithful toward the house of God. You have been watching and following what is going on at New Life Fellowship. And on top of that, you have contributed toward the house of God. I want to read to us in the book of Psalms, chapter 37, verse 25. This is the word of David, King David. He said, I have been young. At one point, I was, have been young. And now I'm old. Now he's old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken. This is what David has experienced with God. And he carried on, nor his descendants begging bread in his life. He never get to see that the righteous forsaken and nor their descendants begging for bread. You know now, with this world pandemic, this pandemic has shaken the whole world, shaken our economy, income, and all that. But let's keep this promise of God in our heart. He said he didn't see, he never seen the righteous forsaken. You are, my brothers and sisters, that believe in the Lord God. You are called sons and daughters of God. You are called a righteous man and a righteous woman. And you will not be forsaken. And you will not, and your descendants will not beg for bread. Let's pray as we give. Heavenly Father, Lord God. My brothers and sisters, Lord God, have prepared their tithes and offering given toward the house of God. New Life Fellowship. Lord, they already, some of them, they already given to church, Lord God. Lord God, according to this word that King David had observed, Lord God, we proclaim. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that none of us will be forsaken. None of us will lack a bread, but we will have overflow with bread and food share with people around us. Lord God, bless my brothers and sisters in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You can give now and give later. Continue to be faithful to the house of God. Tithes and offering is important because it shows where we're at. 
So, welcome back to the service in the afternoon. I hope you all doing well, right? Still doing well. Today is my honor again to come before you and bring this word of God to you. I hope we learn together. The topic of my sermon today is that God will help you. God will help me. God will help every one of us. I'm going to read from 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9. I'm going to read part A from New Living Translation. The eyes of the Lord search the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to Him. The eyes, the eyes of God, the eyes of the Lord is watching, is looking around to find those who are weak and longing for God. He strengthens them. He strengthens me. He strengthens you. You've seen it. You experience it yourself. Since the first day that you are called to be sons and daughters of God. God always faithful. He's always search and looking for us to help. This God is not a God that wait and wait and wait for us to wake him up to come and help. But this God is on the move, is watching around the globe, looking for those that was weak so that he can help strengthen. My brothers and sisters, I don't know where you are at right now. But God is watching over you. You can trust in Him. He will help you for sure. In this, I can see throughout the Bible that there are a lot of examples that show that God is faithful. God is looking after people that need help. Now all of us, all of us looking for help from God, I'm sure that God has enough strength. He has all power and authority to help us. I got a couple points for us this week as well. Point number one. God made a promise with Jacob and fulfilled it. God made a promise with you and I, and he will fulfill this promise. God also has his assignment. His assignment is looking around the globe, looking after you, and helping you in times of need. This one time, God appeared to Jacob and tell him in the book of Genesis, chapter 28, verse 15. I'm going to read from NIV. God said, I am with you and will watch over you. Wow. He said again, I am with you, Jacob, and watching over you. Then ever allow the demons to scare you that you are alone nobody around you nobody care for you not even god that was wrong god is here god said to jacob he said he will watch over jacob he will watch over you he said wherever you go and i We'll bring you back to this land. So Jacob, don't worry about it. 
Even though you leave your land, you're going to come back to this land because I'm watching over you. I'm looking after you. I will guide you and lead you. And carry on, I will not. This is the word of God said to Jacob. I will not. This is a strong promise. He will not. He will not. God said he will not. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. He said he will not leave us alone until his promise toward us are fulfilled. This is wonderful word of God to you and I. He made a promise to Jacob. The same chapter, verse 20 to 21. Then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey, I am taking and, I, and, and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear so that I return safely to my father's household. Then the Lord will be my God. He said, if you say so, I know for sure that this journey that I'm taking, I will not perish in this journey. I will be for sure Return home. I will be for sure return to my family. Return to my God. And God, you are my God. My brothers and sisters, if you are in quarantine and you are separated from your family, Separated from your husband, separated from your wife, separated from your kid, separated from your work, separated from your income. Separated. And I want to speak this word to you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will return home. God has made a promise. If you are to believe in this word of God, you will return home safely. Jacob has a journey. We all have the journey in our lives. This journey might be really, 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 really hard for all of us. But you're not. I will not going to be perish. But God is on our side. He will take us home safely. This is this word. He will take us to our family. He will take us to our memories. He will take us to our dream. This is the word of God. He made a promise and he will fulfill this promise. You can count on it. I don't know. What was the promises that God made for you? But I know for sure that you must have some promises from God that he made for you. Point number two, use this time and go deeper in God. Use this time. You might not allow to go anywhere, everywhere you want to go. You might stuck in one place, but use this time well and learn from it. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 24, verse 10, I'm going to read from New American Standard Version. If you are slack in the day of distress, your strength is limited. If you are slack, if you are lazy, if you are a coward, if you are weak in times of need, in times of wars, you said, no, I can't do it. I can't go. I can't fight. Your strength is limited. This is a time that we can check 
our strength? Do we have strength left? Can we fight with this? Can we fight with this and win over it? I believe that by the grace of God, you can receive help from the Lord. He can strengthen you. A slacker, a lazy person, they always say it cannot. It's difficult. It's impossible. They say that without applying it first and see can they whether do it or not. But the man and the woman who have help from God, they will stand strong and fight and they will win over that circumstances. And they have story to tell others. Look, I was weak, but he made me strong. Look, I don't have the ability to do that, but he helped me. He can help me. Use this time to look around, experience it, experiment it, and see what the Lord God can do. See what you can learn from the world around you. Point number three. Use the light of God that was in you to push out the darkness. You see, this room is closed. If you are to turn off the light, you cannot see me. But when the light is on, you can't see the darkness. The darkness is here. Actually, the darkness is here. But the light is brighter. The light is stronger than the darkness. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 10, I'm going to read from the New American Standard Bible. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Therefore, Finally, my brothers and sisters, you are okay. You will be safe. You will get out of this for sure. Therefore, be strong. Be strong in God. Be strong in the Lord. Don't allow demons and an evil spirit to tempt you and take you away from the promises of God. But strengthen yourself in His might. Strengthen yourself. Allow the powerful God to be stronger in you. Look at Joseph in the Bible. This man by the name of Joseph Joseph was the youngest son in the family of Jacob. His father loves him, but his siblings did not love him. If you are to read through, you can see that Jacob, I'm sorry, uh, Joseph's siblings was jealous with him. Don't want to do anything with him. But Joseph trusts God. Joseph believed in God. The brothers, because of their jealousy, they put Joseph in the well, meaning to destroy him, to kill him. But thankfully, another brother said, don't do that, and take him out and sell him to slavery. To be a slave person, it's not fun. Still, Joseph doesn't think that this is the worst thing in my life. No. Joseph, I love the power of God, the joy from within to serve his boss, 
with all of his heart. And his boss make him over the leader of his home. And later on, with a wrong accusation, causes Joseph to be in prison. In prison, somebody accused you wrongly. And at the end, you end up in prison. Joseph don't want to take revenge. Joseph don't be mad at the person. But Joseph trusts in God. Joseph allowed this opportunity, allowed this time to be a platform so that Joseph will learn from around him. And because of that, the person in the overseas prison trusts Joseph and made Joseph as a leader over prison. And you, if you continue to read the story, later on, Joseph become a man that saved the country from famine. He become the prime minister of Egypt because he has the light of God in him. Wherever he go, he shined. He shined the light. He used the God-given gifts in him to be a positive influence with the people around him. When he see bad circumstances, he did not see as the darkness that stay there forever. But when he sees the darkness, he can see that he will use his light to show the world that how great God is, that the God Almighty used people like him. I believe God the Almighty will use you, will use every one of you, use your light that was given to you. Have it shine. To show the world that come on. Even though you, this world was in the darkness. Demons cast bad thought. Demons cast fear. But we have these promises of God that say, I will bring you home safe. You can make it. Because God is with us. He will not leave us. His assignment is to bring us home safe. My brothers and sisters, this COVID-19 will come to an end soon. This is our prayer. Continue to pray with us during this time as well. Learn from God. Learn from others. Use your gifts to share with people around you. I believe you can do it. Can I pray for you? Hallelujah. 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 Heavenly Father, Lord God, you are our Father. When your disciple ask you to teach them how to pray. You tell them to say, Heavenly Father. It means you are related to us as a father and son. Lord God, your sons and your daughters are in need right now. Lord God, I don't know what kind of need that they are in right now. Let God meet that need, Father. Because you are the God that meet the need in times of need. You can provide because you are God. God, they might lose their business. They might lose their income. They might lose their family or whatever, Lord God. Come and be with every one of them, Lord God. But God, I believe you answer this prayer because you love them, Lord God. Bless your son. Bless your daughters. In Jesus' mighty name. 
Amen. 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 Thank you, brothers and sisters. You have a wonderful day.